Hey there, welcome back to our Harkla YouTube channel. We are so happy to have you today. I'm Rachel. And I'm Jessica, and we are the Certified Occupational Therapy Assistants with Harkla. And today, we're gonna talk all about W sitting. I have a lot to say on the top. I know you do. <laughs> So first things first, what is W sitting? You may have heard of it, maybe you haven't heard about it, but we're gonna explain it so that way you know exactly what to look for when your child is sitting on the floor. So a W sit is when the child is sitting on the floor and their legs are out to the sides. Their knees are bent and they make this W position. If you were to stand above your child and look down on them in this position, their legs and their body would make a W shape. Now what's important about this W sit is if the inside of their ankles are on the floor and their toes are pointing out away from their bum, that's what we call like a static W position. And that's really the red flag or the, the yellow flag, whatever color flag you wanna talk about. That's what we want to be aware of because W sitting is kind of a transition sitting position for toddlers and babies who are learning to crawl and walk and move. So when their toes are pointing towards their bottom, it's not as much of a, hey, this is a big concern, let's, let's work on it. So that's really the, the difference here between these W sits. We've got the static W sit where they're sitting, they're not moving, they're playing with their toys, they're not crossing the midline, and then we have the dynamic W sit where their toes are pointing towards their bottom and they're moving in and out of the position so that it's dynamic. They're moving and they're, they're not just sitting statically and, and playing. Like Rachel said, this can be a developmental position that children move out in and out of. So infants and toddlers, as they're learning about their body and they're moving in different positions, they'll often go into a W sit position on the floor, but it won't be that static position like we described already. They'll be able to easily move in and out of it. They won't just stay in it for long periods of time and their, their feet will be turned in versus facing outward. So just keeping that in mind, if you have a young child and you are seeing them W sit, keep an eye and see if they're easily moving in and out of it or if they're getting stuck in it. Those are what we want to look for when we're looking at younger children because it is very common. But for older children, like ages eight and up, that's the age where we really don't want to see W sitting at all anymore. So we dove into the research a little bit, some of the updated research on W sitting because as pediatric occupational therapy assistants, this is what you know, is interesting to us and we're gonna look at it and we're gonna fill you in. But we found that the researchers say that there's no connection between developmental dysplasia, like hip dysplasia and W sitting, but it is something that we want to remediate and focus on improving so that way it doesn't lead to, you know, minor challenges as the child is growing up. And the big thing here really is just the child's ability to get up and move and play and interact with their environment. Because if our child is stuck in this very static, low to the ground W sit, it really does impact their ability to play and navigate their environment. And oftentimes we'll see a connection between this W sitting and low muscle tone, low endurance for play, and even some laxity in the joints. Mm -hmm. As well as challenges crossing midline because when they are sitting in that low base of support, their legs are out, their bottom is on the floor, they're trying to stabilize for a potentially weak core or that low muscle tone like Jessica mentioned. And so we want to identify why. That's always our goal is like, why are they W sitting? What are they missing? Are they struggling to cross midline? Are they struggling with that core strength? Are they struggling with postural control? Is it a vestibular challenge? So there's all of these underlying factors that could be a potential cause you know without seeing your kiddo we don't know exactly what the reason is but we got to put our sensory goggles on our detective goggles on and see if we can identify that underlying why what is causing the child to w sit is it important to you know fix and to help them or is it a developmental pattern that they're going to grow out of as they as they get a little bit stronger now let's talk about some other seated or movement play positions that we would encourage you to help your child into instead of a w sit the first one is a side sit so where both legs are bent and facing to the side, the same side. 
when you're having your child sit in this position, we want to just make sure that instead of being like kind of hunched over in this position, we want their core activated and their pelvis tilted. And we want to encourage side sitting to both directions. So your child will spend a little bit of time side sitting with their legs to the left, but then an equal amount of time side sitting with their legs to the right. Mm -hmm. The next position is a short kneel or a tall kneel. Now this is exactly what it sounds like. They're just on their knees and instead of their feet being out to the side of their bottom, they are sitting on their heels and on their feet and their toes are kind of pointing towards each other. So that's a short kneel. And then a tall kneel is just kneeling um, with, their, with both knees on the ground and their bum is up off the, off the bottom of their feet. Um, you can do this and you can kind of prep this by bringing their toys up to a higher surface. So you could put them on a chair if they're playing blocks or playing Legos, you could put them on a chair to encourage them getting up into that tall kneel. Um, and then you can do a split kneel as well. So you can have one knee on the floor and then one, um, one knee up and one foot on the floor kind of at that 90 degree angle and then switching sides as well. The next position would be a traditional crisscross sit where our legs are crossed in front of us. This is always a great position to get into. If your child's uh, hips and legs are tight, this can be a difficult position for them to get into. So just kind of keep an eye on if this position is difficult, if it's super uncomfortable for them and they're not able to just relax their legs down, then that could be something to further look into. One trick with this crisscross applesauce position that I found to be really helpful for me personally and my kiddos is to kind of tilt the hips or pull the hips out behind them a little bit. So that way they're not in that posterior pelvic tilt and they're not like super hunched over. So you can either, if you have a toddler, you can kind of grab their, their bum and like pull it out a little bit behind them or as an adult or as an older child, you can have them like lift their body up like sit their hips back and then they'll be able to sit up straighter and if you do this you can feel the change in like activating your core. I was also just thinking we do this in yoga actually you could get a yoga block or some sort of small support cushion and have them sit on that while they're in the crisscross mm -hmm. sit and that will also help their pelvis and their hips get into that position to activate their core. Yeah, if you think about those bumbo chairs that like you sit the baby in and they like can't move and you just like suction cup their little legs in there, that's the position that we don't want our kids to be in that like posterior pelvic tilt where they're like rounded and curved. So you just like envision that and then like just throw that out the window because that's not what we want. But that is just like a helpful visual. But anyways, another fun functional position that we love for so many reasons is to have them lay on their tummy or prone. So you can put their toys on the ground, you can have them draw on the ground, just lay on their on the ground, on their tummy, have them focus on not propping their head with their arms. So put both arms on the ground, they're gonna use their neck muscles and their core and their posterior chain to kind of hold their body up. And, um, and it's a great position for integrating primitive reflexes as well. One last one that you can try would be a long sit. Now, if your child does have lower muscle tone and they're going into that W position to get a better base of support, the long sit might not be the best option, but it's still something you can try. So a long sit is where you're sitting on the ground and your legs are straight out in front of you. And if you're noticing your child in this position, but they're very rounded in that posterior or pelvic tilt, you can put them on a cushion to help support their lower body. You you can help them by putting something behind them that they can lean against to support them a little bit. But just try out these different seated positions, try them with your child, see how they go, move in and out of them and see which ones work best. So now that you know what not to do and what to do, we're gonna teach you some activities that you can do to really work on those underlying skills as to why the child might be W sitting. Um, like I said, we don't know exactly the reason, but we're gonna give you some activities that we would do in the clinic with kiddos who are W sitting for a variety of reasons. The first one is to get a scooter board and do some scooter board activities. So it's one of those boards with the four wheels that we always see in PE classes. And you can do a ton of different activities with the scooter board. You can have your child sit on the scooter board. You can have them lay on their stomach or on their back on the scooter board and do a variety of different things. We actually have a YouTube video where we give you a whole bunch of different activities to do with a scooter board. We'll link it below in the description so you can 
can also watch that video for more ideas. We actually have a full course on gross motor skills that includes a ton of scooter board activities as well. We'll link that one too because that one's cool. It's very creative and there's lots of super fun ways to use scooter boards. Another activity we love is just to play balloon volleyball. So you can play it while you're standing, while you're in a tall meal, while you're sitting crisscross applesauce, while you're sitting on a therapy ball. Really the goal is to modify the position that the child is in, balancing on one leg, prone on their tummy, really focus on activating the core, getting the arms away from the body. Even those visual skills are really helpful too. And balloon volleyball is a great one to work on that crossing midline. So we've mentioned that already in this video of when a child is in that really static W sit position, they're less likely to rotate their trunk and cross midline because they're in such a stuck position. Balloon volleyball really helps promote this because your child is reaching and crossing and moving a lot to get that balloon. And the other cool thing about, there's so many cool things about balloon volleyball, but you think about it, your head has to tilt up and you have to look up at the sky and that also helps to work on integrating things like the STNR and the TLR, those primitive reflexes that can be a potential cause for the W sitting. So we're also working on that reflex integration as well. And speaking of primitive reflexes, the next activity we recommend that you do is called a Superman banana. And this specific activity really targets that TLR. And if you're unfamiliar with primitive reflexes and you're like, what are these letters that you're throwing out? We'll link information below so that you can learn more about those primitive reflexes. But the Superman banana is a really great one. We highly recommend you do it with your child to make it more fun and motivating. Superman, you're gonna lay on your stomach and extend your arms out in front, your legs behind you, and simultaneously lift your arms, your legs, and your head up off the ground like you're flying like Superman. Try to hold it for 10 seconds. Try to hold it for longer if you can with good form. And then roll over onto your back for the banana. You're going to simultaneously lift your arms, your legs, and your head up off the floor and try to hold that position. And we recommend doing it for a minimum of 10 seconds. Try to do this five times and try to incorporate it at least once a day. Yep, easy peasy, you got this. Easy peasy. If you're looking for another activity that we love, it's to use the therapy ball. So having your child sit on a round therapy ball or even a peanut ball and to do things like play balloon volleyball, to do their homework at the table. Um, it's a great position to work on that postural control. You can have them go upside down or walk their hands out over on their stomach. So just playing with the therapy ball and getting used to having that you know, unstable base of support can be really helpful for their core muscles and their vestibular system. One more that we highly recommend you do with your child is jumping and crashing. And my favorite way to do this in the clinic because we have all of the equipment is to use a mini trampoline, jumping on the mini trampoline and crashing onto a crash pad. If you don't have that equipment, that's totally fine. You can get pillows and blankets, couch cushions, a mattress and have your child jump and crash. Why is this good for W sitting? Because it helps to activate the core muscles and the leg, lower body, hip muscles as well. Anytime your child is jumping, anytime they're crashing and having to get their body back up out of that like laying down position, they're gonna have to work all of those muscles. If you have a child who is W sitting and you're like, great, one more thing. There are a few key ways we want to cue them so that way we're not making them feel any shame for doing anything wrong or to make them feel like they're terrible or really to just, you know, hurt their self-esteem, right? Because kids just want to do well if they can and we want to help them do that. So really the, the goal here is to stay positive, you know, tell them what to do instead of what not to do. Like, hey, let's sit crisscross applesauce together. Can you match my legs like this? Can you sit like I'm sitting? It's really good for our core muscles. We're, we're making our tummy really strong, things like that. Yeah, I like that idea of instead of saying, hey, don't sit like that, don't put your legs like that, give them what they can do instead. So you see your child W sitting and you get down on the floor with them and you say, let's sit like this together. Let's play balloon volleyball with our legs like this. And it really does take away any negative connotation while simultaneously teaching their body how to sit in those different positions and move in and out of them more easily. 
So if you are noticing your child is W sitting in that static W position, either they're a toddler or they're an older child, maybe you as the adult do this, and you're, you're noticing that they are uncomfortable in different positions, maybe they're uncomfortable on playground equipment, maybe they're a bit of a sensory seeker. Um, if you're really noticing any concerns or things that you're like, you know what, that just doesn't seem right, we do highly recommend seeking an occupational therapy or a physical therapy evaluation bring it up to your pediatrician and, and advocate for services. Advocate for an evaluation. Always say, when in doubt, rule it out. You know, let's just make sure that there isn't any underlying challenges that we can address with in-person services. If you found this video helpful, if you liked this video, please let us know in the comments. Make sure you click the like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss a new video. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you listen to our podcast, All Things Sensory by Harkley. You can find it on all major podcast platforms. We do have a podcast episode on W sitting and toe walking as well. And if you are interested in any other video topics that you want us to chat about, you can leave those in the comments as well. And finally, make sure you're following us on social media. We are at Harkla underscore family, as well as at All Things Sensory Podcast. We share a ton of content over on our Instagram pages. Yep. Thank you so much. We hope this was helpful and we will chat with you next Tuesday. Hey everyone, welcome. Oh, no, hey you. Okay. Hey daddy. <laughs> Okay, I just have to get out of my system. Okay. <laughs>